lots of stuff been happening since the last uh, building the ultimate techno setup um, so one of the biggest things is is that I've moved out of my uh, bedroom into a proper studio space it's actually uh, one of my homies octopus his studio um, it's like a huge warehouse and then they had like a studio B area that was actually kind of just storage and uh, we struck up a deal so now I'm in the studio B area and yeah so let's check it out here we go as you can see lots of gear and storage this is a huge place little ninja painting that's pretty sick <laughs> yep little lounge area hang out in here but this is my area got some comics and stuff but yeah this was all in my bedroom it was never all set up though I got my vinyl I got congas for gigging this vibraphone was in there drum set was set up uh, usually gigs, uh, turntables and stuff, so I never really set them up at home, but, yep, got some synths, samplers, whatnot, PA speakers, let me turn this thing off, so I got some PA speakers, that's what I gig with, um, those subs are not mine, those are, uh, part of the live sound company that is run by Octopus, but, yeah, so this is it, so this is the desk that was in my room, um, it took up probably a quarter or a third of the whole room and then uh, yeah here's the, the techno setup everything came in got it all boxed up in this uh, Thon case from Thoman Toman Tommen Toman but uh anyway so we got the the analog kick with the M bass that's pretty sick uh, the Erica DB01 that is super sick. It's like a modern take on a 303, I think. I think it's better in the sense that like it's not limited to the to the typical resonant 303 sound. Like you can do some other pretty cool stuff and it sounds really raw, so I really like that. Octatrack. This is the third Octatrack I've had. Uh, I had the first one and then two Mark IIs. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just like I, I let it go and I was planning on not using it anymore And then just after a few weeks, I was like man I really miss this thing because it solves a lot of problems and it does a lot of cool stuff. So uh, Analog heat which you know about which I totally recommend everybody check this out for sound design and You can throw it on the master and it's kind of like the make everything sound better box uh, Or at least I think so uh, typically I run it on saturation, but uh this is a new addition, the Drum Brute Impact. I needed some analog drums. Um, Cause what, what I was doing is I was running the kick and then the bass line, and then I was doing the rest of them were drums. So I only had like, what, two, four, five drums, drum sounds I could use. So I needed something to give me more drum tops and then also having analog is, you know, like a big plus, but. Um, so we got that. And then also, this is a new addition, the Digitone. Um, you know, actually, uh, one of the comments, someone said something about using some ARPs and just kind of like some melodic content to fill out the rest of the track and, or like, you know, the stuff that I do. And I, I kind of agreed and I heard some stuff with just the Digitone and, uh, it's like a techno, techno machine. So like it's, it's got a wide range of things it can do. It's also digital, it's FM. Um, so that counterbalances the analog fatness, um, which this can also get really fat in a different way. So that's why this is here. I'm still learning this box. I mean, I haven't really put in the time yet, but um, my my thing is like, if you can use Octatrack, you can use any of the other boxes, no problem. Probably any box ever known to man, no problem. Um, but yeah, and then finally we got the uh, the FMR RNL, really nice limiting amplifier, uh, or RNLA. Um, yeah, I don't know, I mean, the thing, it's supposedly more gooey, this is the description. Uh, people say it's more gooey than the uh, FMR RNC, the really nice compressor. The compressor is like really transparent, 
to get stuff up to level and then this thing is uh it's got a little bit of color it kind of like it's a little more mushy it can be but i have it set uh pretty much almost full full attack uh timing wise so it's it's definitely more than 10 milliseconds probably all the way almost up to 30. um and i just like barely hit this thing you know just like get that second light blinking a little bit that's when i know i'm up to level and then uh I got this gain control right here just to kind of get everything up to level but also underneath this this isn't velcro down yet it's going to be uh, i have to get the proper spacing right but the ebtech home eliminator the rnla has this weird cabling scheme where it's like uh, you can use a trs cable and it's a send and a return and yeah so basically what happened was is when i first got it um, I ran it after the heat and I couldn't get it to I couldn't get any sound. It was really weird So after researching I needed the home eliminator to convert it from uh, Properly from balance to unbalanced blah 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 blah. So Anyway, it's just that I uh, just know that if you need to get if you want to get into that, but I Don't know about the drum brute impact. I don't know if it's gonna stick around. It's kind of large um, You know in this setup is kind of compact uh, but I do like that it's analog. It has a nice sound. Uh, one thing I don't like is every time I turn it on, I gotta flip this over to MIDI, and that's that's kind of annoying. But and then also the uh, it doesn't save the the distortion setting is not on when I turn it on. Um, so just some things gotta do when I turn it on. But I don't know. I might replace it with the Digitact. Um, but we'll see. Who knows? And then, uh, yeah, this mess right here. I don't know if anybody knows if there's a way, because I know like guitar pedals, they have these dedicated boxes and you can like, you know, power all of your stuff off of one box that's like plugged into the wall, um, which is super sick. I don't know why anybody, nobody's done it with this kind of stuff where you could, it's like a universal power supply on every channel. That would be so sick uh, if there was a box like that. I'm not an electrical engineer, but as you can see, this is kind of a mess, and it takes up, um, I would say, uh, almost a quarter of the entire case. So, I don't know. I would love to figure out a solution for that. So, if anybody has any leads or tips or ideas, definitely all ears on that. But, yeah, here's some techno. And uh, I got this running... <laughs> My, my little baby Gentle X, tiny Gentle X, these are uh, 83 uh, 40s? Yeah, it's because they're the four inch, four inch Gentle X monitors with the SAM system. So like there's this whole ethernet setup and uh, with like a, a mic and like their software and it basically blasts like a, like a sending or, dec I can't remember, it was like, I think it's a sending, like a big sine wave through the whole room and then takes the measurements and then figures out where your uh, standing waves are, um, any kind of reflections, all that stuff. And that seemed to work pretty well. Uh, underneath there, there's the sub, the matching sub. I forget the name of it, but it's the, it's the one that's like 1200 or something bucks, something like that. But that's all integrated with the SAM, which by the way, GLM does not run on Catalina yet, which is annoying and that's not really Genelec's fault. Uh, Apple is just, Apple messed up a lot of stuff when they went to Catalina, um, but yeah. So anyways, uh, so yeah, and some here's some old drum machines. The, the SH-101 has the drum tracks. I have a uh, Oberheim DX that's going home, or it's probably going to be sold shortly. Not home. Um, <laughs> and this is kind of silly, but I've been running a Zoom H6 as my interface for a really long time. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's really weird because like uh, I had a uh, an RME Babyface Pro, and I found myself just using like one or two channels all the time, right? And then uh, for some reason, I just got got interested in the idea of a field recorder. Like, oh yeah, we're gonna go out and record sounds, you know, in Hawaii and get some like beach sounds and waterfall and like a bamboo forest. There's all kinds of places like that, and I never really did it. I should still do that, but uh, I found out, I mean, I can always still use it as an interface, and so I just started doing that, and the sound quality, I mean, given my monitor setup and like how everything was set up at home, 
I didn't really hear any difference, so I was like, well, I can just sell the, the RME, but you know, it's funny, um, this setup right here is really designed for live. That was the main idea. And it honestly, it's mainly because of the Octatrack, because this thing is not really, really set up to be like a studio piece. I mean, you can, uh, but since it only has uh, the main outs and then you can do use the Q outs as like a, another kind of output. So technically it has like four outputs that you can choose, but I always just use the two. Um, this being the centerpiece, yeah, it's really only designed for live. Uh, and then also there's, you know, overbridge came way later. This is supported with overbridge. This is, you know, this has overbridge. Um, so it, 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 it poses a lot of additional challenges. Like any of these, like anytime you want to sync machines to a computer and like you want to use MIDI, it's just like this never ending plethora of just like problem after problem. Um, one of my friends, Ted, uh, he lives on the other side of the island. He's got this crazy studio, you know, vintage gear, 808s, 909, blah, 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 blah. Everything like anybody could ever want. Um, and I would hang out with him a lot. You know, I'd go over there uh, every once in a while. And for the better part of a year or two, uh, it was like, he was always like trying to, like working on the next thing just to get the timing tight. And I never understood, I didn't understand it for a long time. Uh, but timing and the machine timing and, and all that kind of stuff, but uh, um, For what it's worth the MPC 3000 is like the tightest uh, Timing machine out there to sync everything up. That's what he uses to clock his whole studio um, But yeah, so the, I mean there's a lot of challenges with this and I'm, I'm starting to find it out because well, what I just did is I slaved the Octatrack to Ableton's clock uh, So Ableton was the driver so I'd hit play on Ableton and it would do the MIDI uh, It was going out of Ableton into the Octatrack starting the transport here And this is all rigged up through various MIDI cables to start everything else up and keep everything going um, But there's actually a uh, one. I think it's two hops to get to this thing via MIDI um, well, actually, it might be three. It might be going out of here, into here, out of here, using through, here, and then finally to here. Um, and I think there's some, the delay that MIDI has, I think there's some, the delays, like, it's when it finally hits the, the board, which is recording out into the H6, which is hooked up to Ableton. Um, you can see like this is this is just a kick drum I recorded and you can see there's this huge delay right here um, so you know it's another challenge I have a dedicated MIDI interface uh, to hook everything up and it's the ESI I forget the name it's like some crazy 8x2 or something like that but it has uh, eight MIDI input slash outputs on the front and the same thing on the back this is a really cool box because you're not limited to eight ins and eight outs. It detects whether it's being used as an input or an output. And then, so each channel has an additional 16 uh, channels. So like, this is like a port. So port one, let's say this is going out. I could have 16 channels going out of this, out of port one. And then out of port two, I could have another 16 different channels going out. So like, you can hook up a lot of mini devices with this thing. Um, I just got it out of necessity because I was getting to where I was like wanting to hook all my stuff together, but yeah, that's a different. That was a, a different time period um, before all this, and now I guess I kind of I kind of want to do it. Yeah, but with audio. Anyways, sorry, I just like just kind of like spitballing here, but yeah. So this is studio space. I'm actually working on some uh, uh, acoustic treatment. This is 703 fiberglass rigid fiberglass and a frame and like some whatever fabric but uh i ended up it's so crazy like i call these uh maui rainbow portals when this happens but basically every now and then i'll like really need something right for example 703 fiberglass um is the choice for acoustic treatment because it's pretty much the best 
and uh, or even Rock Soul. Like I was, I was willing to take anything. I was like 703, Rock Soul. What is that other stuff? Knopf, uh, Manville. Like it didn't matter. I just needed some treatment, and to get a box of like 12 one-inch panels shipped here was like $500, right? So the box of stuff is like 70, 80 bucks, but then it was like $500 to ship. And I was like, there's no way. Um, and so I was just like, well, there goes acoustic treatment. That's never gonna happen. And lo and behold, I get on Craigslist, 45 minutes after it posted, there was a guy uh, who had a studio from LA. He happened to move out here and he shipped out all of his 703 that he had, his extra stuff. Uh, still wrapped, so like raw panels, right? And I kid you not, I got, it was 48 one inch panels. Actually, I think it's like 49 one inch panels. And then another box of 12 two inch panels. And then all these were just kind of like what he had built already just for like a quick job. So I just like threw them in here real quick and it makes a big difference. And these aren't, this is like, what is this? Two, four, five panels it makes such a huge difference. Like anyways, so that's what's going on. Uh, I already built some frames out of MDF, which is another mistake. Shouldn't have used MDF, should have used something else. Um, actual wood, because it's really humid in this area. Um, the space is pretty cool. Uh, it's cool in the sense that it's neat, but it's not cool, like it's hot. It gets pretty hot in here, it gets humid really quick, and there's not a lot of air circulation, but super happy to be here. Like, I can't believe that all this stuff was literally in in a room that was less than half of this size. You know, stored in a closet or what whatnot. And uh, yeah, super happy to be here. Probably gonna be doing some mixing and mastering for folks to hopefully keep up with the bills. So if you need some stuff, mix or master, let me know. Um, That'll probably be all in the box. Uh, and then for mastering, this is, dude, this thing is so good for mastering. Uh, real quick, a story about the analog heat and a master. I did, uh, we did this vinyl comp, we did a compilation for uh, hip hop beats that we that we do here at uh, Maui Beat Sessions. So we get together every month, producers bring in their beats and we just share beats and play, right? And so we did this best of 2019 compilation. There was a CD over here. Um, we did this best of 2019 compilation uh, for my track. I looked for an online mastering service that wasn't just uh, you know like AI driven or whatever um, or digital mastering. I wanted analog mastering because like that was important to me. I found this one service. I forget the name of it, but it was like the only online analog mastering chain available. And so I sent my track in. I did the mastering on it uh, through that service. It was like 20 something bucks, 20, 25 bucks. And I get it back and I was like, yeah, that sounds really good. But uh, the mix was off. I needed to take down the sample a little bit and boost the kick a little bit. And I was like, well, I'm not gonna re-upload it and pay for it again. Cause that's like 40, 50 bucks already for one track, right? So I was like, well, I used the heat on the master for the Octa track and it's amazing. Why can't I try it with the my track, right? So I did. And it took about five tries uh, to get it perfect. But I actually was able to, I was able to match it really quick, the online mastering. And uh, it took about five tries to get it dialed in perfectly, just the way I wanted it. Um, but I was able to just use this, just this, and get a master that was like up to par, right? And actually we took that release and we put it on a vinyl, not a, not like a, like a thousand run, but we did like a lathe cuts and you know, it came out fine. It came out, came out good actually. So I highly recommend the analog heat. Like it's such a cool, cool box. Like it makes life easy. It's really easy just to get a good sound out of your mix um, if you need a quick fix. But 
if you want to get serious and dial it in like you can do that too and i've done it but anyways so there's a studio uh you know hopefully we'll be able to get everything linked up pretty well i think i'm gonna need an interface a proper interface again just to get everything uh dialed in correctly and get the workflow going but it's all it's, it's hot in here it's already getting warm but probably gonna call it a night i've been fighting with midi and ableton and audio all evening just trying to get this to go go right but anyways so here's the setup i'm gonna do more in-depth kind of reviews and talk throughs everything and yeah so see you in the next video